But I stopped going out, stopped drinking, stopped partying. I don't want to die alone. So what do you do to meet someone? And you always get that advice from your friends, you know, just let love find you. <laughs> just go to the supermarket and you reach for the same avocado. <laughs> now I got to hang out in the produce section for eight hours a day. Just waiting for some girl to walk in, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, you like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one's ripe, yeah. <laughs> That's creepy, I can't do that, you know? So I've found a, a website, a service actually, where you can get set up on blind dates and it's called It's Just Lunch. Don't do it, because it's just a rip off. And they set you up on 12 blind dates, so I used to live in San Francisco. I'm not proud of this, because the service costs 1,600 US dollars. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, like, wow, he struggles? Yes, even me. Even someone intelligent, good looking, and humble, like myself, I still struggle. It's terrible. So anyway, I go on this first date and you talk to your love agent and you tell her your preferences, you know. I want a woman who's small, petite. That way she feels safe because women usually like guys who are taller and bigger, right? And she's like, perfect, we have the perfect match for you. And I never heard from this woman again. And then fast forward a few weeks, I go on my first date and I show up to the restaurant and you're there. And the restaurant, they're in on it, the hostesses. So you tell them, I'm here. For it's just lunch. And the woman says, oh, your date's here already. Ah! We'll send her right over. I didn't know what she looked like. I was curious. So I leaned in. I'm like, is she, is she cute? And they said, she's here. And we'll send her right over. <laughs> so I go to the bar. And I'm hanging out, waiting for my date to arrive. And then I hear a voice. She says, hello? I turn around. And she's taller and bigger than me. Now you may be thinking, is he that superficial? Yes. <laughs> but not today. I'm gonna try something new. My type's not working out, I'm gonna try something new, you know? Everybody's got their type, you know? Tall, white and handsome, usually. Sexy, mm-hmm. You know what women say? I mean, I'm just picky, you know? <laughs> I like what I like, you know? I'm not racist, but my vagina is. <laughs> It's true. So I thought, no, fuck that. I'm gonna try something new. She's curvy. And I like that women can call themselves curvy. Men can't do that. You know, women can be like, I'm curvy. Men, I'm cur you're just fat, motherfucker. <laughs> curvy. Half black, half Brazilian. Woo! Tons of chemistry. We sit down, we're trying to chat, you know, do that thing where you're trying to read the menu, but you're trying to talk to the person, and you're not reading the menu, you're not talking to the person. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the waiter comes, can I take your order? We need five more minutes, thank you. <laughs> so I end up ordering the Caesar salad, right? She orders a chicken. A chicken. A full chicken. I'm not fucking around, a chicken. And she eats the whole thing. Does <laughs> and I got on dates with skinny girls. Kale salad, three croutons. I'm full, big leaves. This bitch didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Just tearing through this thing. And I was like, yo, I like this chick. This girl is sexy. She doesn't give a fuck what people think about her. That's what I like, you know? So we end up liking each other, all this chemistry. And I thought, man, I want tonight to end with a bang. My friend told me, if you want to get a girl super turned on, what you do is you take her to a male strip show. Yeah, male strip show. That way, they're super turned on. And who are they going to fuck? It's going to be you, right? It's like Ghostbusters, who you gonna fuck, right? <laughs> so now I've been to female strip shows where there's women on stage and men in the audience who are acting generally well behaved. And then I went to this male strip show where there's men on stage and women in the audience acting like fucking savages. <laughs> And you all start to yell. Women have this yell that only comes out of them when there's a naked man on stage. And it seems to evolve through the generations so that when other women hear it, they descend from the forests <laughs> to see what's happening. You know the yell that, It's the scariest fucking thing in the world. And so I walk into this theater, there's 800 women all screaming like that. And I'm thinking like, what the fuck, is Justin Timberlake here? Like, what's going on? 
And there's just this tall, dark dude on stage named Shadow dancing with his dick out to save a horse ride a cowboy. And they're like, you're so talented! He had no rhythm. He's just bouncing up and down like, like when you hit pause on Super Mario Brothers. This is all he's doing. <laughs> and she's like, let's go to the front. I'm like, no. And she drags me. She's a plus-size girl, so she's just knocking bitches out the way and shit. <laughs> We get right to the front, and then they come down, they give lap dances to all the girls in the VIP section. She doesn't have a ticket, just walks over the barrier and sits down, and Shadow comes over, scoops her up. She's a fucking 100 kilos, and he goes like this. And I don't know what to do, so I'm just standing there filming like a proud parent, you know, just. I hope she's having fun. I thought, she, I, if I don't get her out of here, she's gonna fuck him. My plan's backfiring. So I quickly grab her a drink. I was like, yo, let's go back to your place, Netflix and chill. And she's like, okay. So we're back in her apartment. Only problem is she just moved in. She doesn't have a bed. She has a half-assembled Ikea bed, nothing to fuck on. So she told me, I'm gonna go to the shower and get more comfortable and get ready. And I said, okay, I'm gonna sit here and wear what I'm wearing. <laughs> and I thought, while well, she's in the shower, I'm gonna put her bed together. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't have enough time, you know, to read the instructions. This is Ikea, what the fuck? You know, just <laughs> a bunch of screws. You know, chuck them under there. Put the mattress down, perfect timing. Door opens up, matching red bra and panties, red high heels, Ooh, brown skin, brown hair, beautiful. Ooh. Strapless bra, my favorite. I reach around to get that clasp. And the bra went. <laughs> flew off. <laughs> Hit her cat. <laughs> Titties came out like airbags. <laughs> Big ass nipples the size of compact discs. Not CDs, compact discs. Voluptuous, beautiful woman. And she's into dirty talking. I'm kind of shy. So she says, you ever been with a plus size girl? And I said, no. She says, the best sex you ever had. You know why? Tell me. No matter where you grab, everything feels like a titty. Calf titty, hamstring titty, pussy titty, titty titty. It's like fucking on a waterbed. Sex on the beach every day. And I was like, yeah. So we start fucking against the wall, standing up doggy style. And I'm bringing that medium dick. Cause not everybody lives up to their stereotype. I'm hitting that shit hard too, laying down that good pipe. And she says, harder. So I put on my Nikes for more traction. <clears throat> yeah, that's what good sex looks like, y'all. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then she says, I, she hasn't come yet. So I'm thinking like, what would Shadow do? So I turn her around, I squat down, I grab her by the legs, I pick her up, and I put that bitch right back down. <laughs> oh. I gotta do more CrossFit. So I'll just go down on her. I don't know her that well but I have health insurance. <laughs> but the only thing is, every vagina is different, and women, no help, no, nothing. You don't help, you just, you're just up there like. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to tell Karen about this one. <laughs> We're down there like. <laughs> Keep going. It's fucked up. I don't know what to do. So I just start going down at her, right? And I'm just praying that it works. But the thing is, when you go down on a woman, you gotta stay till she comes. Because if you leave too early, you'll lose it. Then you gotta go back, and then you gotta start from the beginning, and you'll be there for 17 years. <laughs> so you gotta stay till the job's done. But the thing is, when a woman comes, there's a small window from when she comes where you gotta get the fuck out the way. Otherwise, she'll clamp down her legs like a bear trap. <laughs> she doesn't care about you. She's coming. She's in a different universe where the rules of laws and physics don't apply because her legs have the strength of 10,000 men. 
Where does it come from? I don't know. And so she's going. I'm down there doing my thing. And she says, I'm coming. And everything went dark. I'm tapping like it's fucking mixed martial arts and shit. She doesn't watch sports, so she doesn't know what the fuck I'm doing. Finally, she opens up her legs and delivers me like a baby. Just... <laughs> oh, my God. It's like waterboarding. Wow. She came. I was like, yes. And then she said, it's your turn. I'm like, no. And she gets on top. She starts riding me like there's no tomorrow. I'm just, just raining down flesh. And she tells me, you're going to come in three minutes. I was like, three minutes? No one's ever given me a deadline. And two minutes and 59 seconds later, her bed broke. <laughs> but I met this girl by not being so superficial. So what I'm trying to say, people, there's hope. 